here and welcome back to another video. You join me today in the Toyota GT86, a car which you have not seen on the channel for an awfully long time. First of all, excuse the hair, I'm very conscious of it. I hate it, it's doing my head in, but you have to deal with it. Um, but anyway, today's video is all about, well really, the future for this car because, well, as I'm sure you are aware, that this car has not featured on this channel in a very, very long time. Now, there is a couple of reasons for that, and that's exactly what today's video is all about. So, getting straight into things, which I guess isn't necessarily the main reason, um, but definitely one which is fairly obvious, and that is the fact that due to all the restrictions and everything in the UK, this car, obviously, um, over the last couple of months would not have been able to be used at all. And that is the same story with the M140i. There was a time when that car was garage bound for about two months. Um, nothing wrong with it just because of the restrictions in place for travel. However, that has been lifted now and that car is now back on the road. As you would have seen, um, it actually has been on track recently as well. That was uh, a lot of fun to say the least. However, the main reason as to why this specific car has not been on the road um, is actually down to the engine. Now, you guys may recall I did film and upload a video uh, a couple of months ago now um, about the overdue engine valve spring recall that was due on this car. I actually ended up taking this car in to Toyota in Basingstoke near me um, for its recall. Um, bit of a story, I took it in and then had to pick it up a couple of days later due to the uncertainty of uh, the COVID-19 situation in the UK. Dealerships were closing, so I was given the opportunity to either leave the car there not knowing when I'll be able to get the car back or collect it and again, not know when I'll be able to take it back in uh, for its recall. Now, ever since I found out that the recall was due on this car, I wasn't using the car anyway. So it has just been, well, driveway bound, I would say garage bound because it doesn't live in a garage, this car. Um, for quite a few months, um, I, I, to be honest, I think the last time um, it featured on the channel was probably near enough four months ago now, um, and virtually it hasn't been driven since. Uh, however, the situation has changed, and I will explain that now, because the reason for this car being in my ownership is more of a A to B car, more of an everyday car, which I know is strange, having the 140i as well, which is arguably the more um, dailyable car, I suppose you could say, um, but I have addressed the reasons in uh, a previous video if you don't already know. Um, so this car was basically sitting around doing nothing and it was also not fulfilling the purpose um, of the ownership of the car, if that makes sense. Like the main reason for me buying this car was to use um, not every day, but most weekends, traveling across the UK filming cars because I wasn't so much worried about the mileage of this compared to the 140i. And like I said, I did explain that more in the main video I did about that. Um, and obviously, I was then finding myself using the M140i more than I wanted to. Um, not more than I was allowed to by any means, but, but just I was putting more mileage on the car than I was really planning to do. And so now, as you can see, I'm now using the car again, but that means that I have an overdue engine recall with risks of it going wrong, and yes, I'm using the car. I am aware of that, but there is a very valid reason as to why I'm doing that. Like I said, I did take the car in to have its engine recall. I can't remember the exact date that that was, but it was just before the lockdown. I believe the week before, or maybe even the week of the UK lockdown. I then had to collect the car a couple of days later after the work wasn't done um, because the dealership was closing. I was then told that when the lockdown was eased, I'll be able to bring the car back in, get it booked in and get the job done. I then did that, but was then told a different story that Toyota are now not carrying out the recalls until the foreseeable future because of, uh, what was the reason they gave? It was because of um, the lack of support from the factory. I then called around some other dealerships and was actually told a few different things, uh, one of which the parts have to be ordered in uh, specifically, which I found quite funny because my car was booked in, so the parts should have been ordered when I made that booking. And in fact, my car was actually at the dealership for a couple of days. So where are my parts? Do you get what I'm saying here? <laughs> it's really bizarre. And so I was basically left with a car which I couldn't use anyway for a number of different reasons. And the reason I'm now using the car is because quite honestly, I'm past the point of really caring if 
it were to go wrong because I have valid excuses to prove that I actively went to go get the car booked in and done, yet they don't want to do it at this point in time. Now, the UK lockdown, I suppose you could say, has been eased um, and travel has been, um, well, unrestricted now for, I'd probably say about a month. And I have been trying most weeks to try and get it booked in, but they're still not doing it. Now, obviously this isn't the specific dealership's fault. I understand it's probably the same for every Toyota garage in the UK, if not the world, but it just is a bit frustrating. And so I'm basically using the car because <laughs> I'm left with no option. If it goes wrong, then it goes wrong. And that is basically that. And so now you're kind of up to date with the reasons why this car hasn't really featured on the channel because it has been parked up for a long time in my driveway, probably for about four months now. I've now started using it over the last couple of weeks for different film shoots around the UK, um, using it as an A to B car, which is what I bought the car for. I didn't buy the, oh, M2 competition. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> that's very, very nice. Um, so yeah, I didn't buy this car primarily for the channel. I bought it, one, as a car which I've always wanted to buy for no particular reason, I always fancied one, and one which would go alongside the M140i to kind of make daily driving duties almost not easier but just more sensible I suppose you could say rather than just using one car and putting all the miles on that that was my thinking anyway and still is so I'm now using the car um, for kind of errands and filming journeys things like that but obviously until now I haven't really featured it on the channel because the cars I'm featuring when I film are obviously the cars I'm featuring when I film not this um, a GoPro just fell off the screen. <laughs> Actually made me jump. Well, I think I'll stop recording on that one because we won't need that for much longer. Um, so yeah, now you're up to speed with kind of um, why the car hasn't featured on the channel, but now I'm basically in a bit of a predicament with the future ownership of this car. Do I sell the car? Do I keep it and modify it? Or do I keep it, wait God knows how long till I can get the recall done and then sell it after that? I'm not gonna lie, it has put a very sour taste in my mouth knowing that really this engine is not very strong because I've heard on various forum sites that people's engines are going after the recall, um, even on stock power. And one of the other reasons why I bought this car was to modify it. So, yeah, well, this guy obviously doesn't understand the 20 mile hour limit. Nice. So I'm kind of at a bit of a dead end with what I want to do with the car. Um, like I said, it's not really the kind of car which I was aiming to feature on the channel all the time. Not like the 140, the 140 is still the main car of the channel. This is just, well, I've explained basically. Hopefully you can understand that by now. Um, but as I'm sure you can understand, it is very frustrating to basically have a car which I can't really use. And the reason why I bought it, or one of the reasons why I bought it, I basically can't do. Um, and to be honest, if all these restrictions um, wouldn't have happened, then this car would probably be turbocharged by now. It would probably be running around 300 brake, and it would be a bit of a beast. Of course, that isn't the case because, because of everything that's happened. Um, so yeah, I'm kind of just thinking out loud here. I, I, I don't really know what to do. Um, there is a part of me which would sell the car now, change it with something else, to be something which is maybe a little bit more reliable um, but still the kind of car which I can use on a day-to-day -day basis uh, or for filming errands and trips. Um, yeah but I mean pretty much all the plans for this car have gone wrong. I was planning to take this down through Europe in March of course I had to take the 140 because I then found out about the engine recall and I didn't want to drive one and a half thousand miles in well the matter of maybe like a week um, because arguably the engine could have blown up and myself and Chloe would have been stranded in Europe. So I then took the 140, which I didn't want to do due to mileage and everything like that. But that's a completely different story. Just the point of this is to kind of convey the frustration which I'm um, having right now with what I can't do with this car. <laughs> and so I am kind of open to ideas, suggestions from you to help almost with my decision. Now, this car is great, and I almost forgot how great it was. I mean, no, it's not the quickest car, but it is a lot of fun to drive, obviously not now um, around town. Um, 
but it is a phenomenal um, driver's car, I suppose you could say. And I certainly don't regret buying one for one minute. But kind of what I do regret is almost coming into this, um, not knowing that the recall was this much of a big deal, how weak the engines are, I suppose you could say, and just kind of reevaluated my plans for this car and maybe took a different approach. So yes, that is where we are with the car at the moment. Um, like I said, I'm kind of at the stage where I'm just using the car because it isn't viable for me to just leave it parked up, not doing what it's supposed to do. And so I hope you guys can understand the frustration and the different avenues which I am exploring. Um, but yeah, a bit of a talking video, a one which I've actually wanted to do for quite a while, but obviously I've only recently started using the car again. Hopefully I can get the recall done because I don't, if I do decide to sell it, I don't really want to sell it with this recall um, overdue because it was reinstated um, the best part of two years ago now which isn't ideal. I mean, I know cars, or GT86s, which have done like 50,000 miles, haven't had the recall done, and it's fine, but it's just what if. And that was what I was thinking uh, initially, but obviously now there's no other option which I have, really. Um, and so that's why I'm using it. Um, but anyway, that's gonna wrap things up for today. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Please, any suggestions or, or help uh, is always welcome in the uh, comments down below. Um, but yeah, like I said, I hope you guys have enjoyed. If you have, please do make sure you leave a like and make sure you subscribe for all the adventures still to come.